Hi all, right, now for the fun bit. Okay, so um, we're ready for some casting action. Okay, so we've prepped our moulds, um, we've cut the surfaces and we've given them a couple of coats of honey wax. Um, and the next bit is then to apply ease release um, 2831. Uh, that's us over here. Uh, mold release um, and this stuff is specially formulated for um, the urethane foams. Um, what you find is the urethones, sorry, urethone foams, they stick like crazy to anything. Yeah, so um, you know I've got away with just waxing the molds um, once I've pulled a few um, casts from there, um, but. It really isn't worth the risk of wrecking your moulds and all that work you put into them. So what I do now is I just brush the stuff on, especially on the first, on the first um, pull or casting. Okay, so really easy to use. You get give it a really good shake up. It's like a paraffin sort of wax, um, and it dries very very quickly. Um, yeah, uh, there's not much more to say. It says uh, apply one coat. Um, with a spray gun or brush, allow it to dry and then reapply a light coat before each mould. Um, you know, I, I really, I really ploughed on this piece here, um, make sure it gets right down into these deep crevices. Um, basically to just make sure that um, it pulls as easily as possible from, from those areas and doesn't key in. Um, I'm hoping they've done a better job with these ones. Um, and we'll hopefully get away with getting decent um, casts from the first pull. Um, normally it takes me two or three goes um, with a new mould to get it to start to pull nicely. Um, but that's just the way it goes. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping I've done a really nice job on these. Um, this, side of, this part of the wing normally is easy peasy. You know, it's, it's nice. There's no um, deep valleys there, no crevices, you know, no, nothing that can get caught. Over here, where I perhaps could have been a little bit more generous on the, um, what do we call it, the draft. Um, normally, sometimes you have a few problems, especially in this area. But I'm hoping um, we'll get away with it and have a decent pull. So I haven't pulled any parts from these yet. Um, I've specifically left it so you can see um, the first pull. Um, and fingers crossed, we should get a good result. So, nothing really special about applying this stuff. Um, I can just show you the way I've been doing it and why I've been doing it. Normally I decant a bit, yeah. As you can see it's like a milky white, milky white colour. Um, really soft bristled brush again, um, same one as I was using, I think this is slightly bigger than the one I was using for the acetone. But yeah, again this it cleans really easy in acetone, I think I'm cleaning these in, yeah, acetone. Um, We'll clean these brush up, brushes up nicely, or um, uh, alcohol, I think that's some distilled um, alcohol. But anyway, um, load up your brush, okay. Um, I normally start by doing all the, holding the, this part of the mould like this. So when I actually um, coat it in there, it has a chance to actually settle, rather than just run down to the flat. So as you can see, I'm really, really packing it in there. Let's zoom in a bit. Not too much. A little bit out. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm really letting sort of puddle in there. Um, so I want it to actually dry and form little chamfers in those tight corners. So this first bit, I always go up and hold the part like this. Um, now when we're doing this we're going to lose our nice gloss finish that we spent all that time um, getting um, but that's uh, all part and parcel. Okay. I have tried spraying this and it has been successful but with these first um, pulls I find it a lot easier just to um, brush it on and that way I can really see where it's gone. Um, Again, get right in all these nooks and crannies in this orientation. So, so we've done that edge down here. Sure got that bit. It dries really, evaporates off and dries really, really quickly. Um, 
you don't want it to puddle as such, um, but you do want it to um, <coughs> build up some thickness um, to it. Again, I'll do this edge. These are ribbed sections, they're not sort of two ribs, they're sort of ribby sort of support things that I don't touch um, <coughs> on both sides of the skin. Um, they're like a sort of skinny rib. Um, they normally pull really easily, so I don't normally worry too much about these. Um, in this area here, again, normally pulls really easily. So what you got to really work on is make sure you get on the side of the walls and it doesn't just run, out, run away. This bit here is a bit of a tricky bit with the servo, <coughs> servo recesses. So, you know, no rush. Okay, I hope you can see it piling in there. Um, so, again, we're not really too worried if we lose some of the crispness on the inside. It's more important that the part pulls, pulls nicely. So you really got to be careful when you're removing the parts from these because they are quite delicate. Um, and if you sort of separate the 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 skin that forms, you have plastic skin. You have like a plastic skin, then the foam, then the plastic skin that forms. And if you separate the plastic skin from the foam on either side, you sort of lose all your strength. Um, so you got to be a little bit careful when you're taking these out. Like I say, I'm hoping I've put all, <coughs> everything I've learned into into this last set of moulds so far. So um, <coughs> and these are definitely the, the nicest finished ones I've done to date. So okay, so I've done that side. Now I'll turn on the other side, on the other edge. And I'll just do the other faces. It's not too bad actually painting this on. You actually see where you've um, where you've been, because it'll actually put a, like a hazy sort of matte effect on it. Finish on it. So I think on this on this part, I'll probably put about at least four coats of this on for the first pull. You know, um, play it safe. You know, like I say, if we lose a little bit of detail. It's not as crisp as it, you know you want it. It's not really a big problem because it's on the inside of the wing, and no one's going to see that. So again, so you don't want it to pull up too much because it gets like a. If it runs, obviously you brush it out. It gets a bit soft. Otherwise, if you don't pull too much, you want like layers, if anything, to build up layers. Um, <coughs> and then on this leading edge here, again. So. Um, I don't know if you can see that, that the it's going to form a nice little chamfer on the inside or fit on the inside. Um, just to help. It's really difficult actually putting these small fillets on on the model um, on the CAD model, and um, I just found it easy to sand them on or you know fill them like this with the um, release agent. So once you've got that done, what I'm going to do is just brush out any runs. I'll just let that bit dry a bit before I um, do the rest. You know, we'll just let that dry a bit. And we'll do the other bit while we're waiting for that to dry. <coughs> so all we've done on that is just the um, the deep bits. Um, well, just wait for, by the time I finish doing this one here. Um, that'll be ready for to finish off. So I normally do a couple of coats on the on the actual out, on this bit of the mold because it just protects it and when the foam um, expands and pulls out, it just helps just helps keep the mold clean really. Um, It's very easy to apply. It's not, you know, it's not rocket science really. Um, and if, you, if it does run, um, make sure you brush it out because it will, you will get runs. So that's sort of, um, sort of weird stuff. It's, uh, 
like I say, once it's once it's dry, it's like a it's almost like a candle. It feels like a waxy candle, um, and nothing sticks to it, which is brilliant. Uh, that's what you need. Absolutely nothing will stick to this, apart from super glue will go straight through it. And because I actually tried to join <coughs> two wing halves with some super glue, and it got into the mold, and it you know just I don't know whether it reacted with it or just burnt through it, but um, yeah. Made a bit of a mess of the mould. Again, just to brush this on. When you actually spray this on, you get a lovely um, matte finish with it. It'll probably um, paint really, really well because it'd be like keyed. Um, I've only had really one successful pull when I sprayed it. Um, I need to just work on my spraying technique a bit, I think. Um, and the other thing I tried as well is I've, I've applied it like this with a brush, and then um, sprayed it with a coat of um, PVA uh, release, um, and that worked really, really well. Um, the bits that pulled worked really well. <laughs> there was a new mold, um, so um, the part actually broke, um, and I didn't know whether it was the PVA that caused the problem, or um, or the way I was um, casting it. it was, you know, it's the early days, really. I'm still learning. But I think I've got a method of casting that's, that's working um, relatively relatively well. You know, you will get bus strokes with this, unfortunately. That's why I'm using a really fine brush <coughs> um, to put the stuff in. Um, when I say brush strokes, you, could, you don't really know, it's them on the, on the cast part. Um, apart from, you get like matte areas and shiny areas. Um, and I emailed um, the, the manufacturers of this stuff to find out how we um, so to grease the part to um, paint, and you just use that rubbing alcohol, you know, the medical rubbing alcohol, and apparently it cleans up nicely. Um. Obviously, you don't want to clean your mold with acetone because it's going <laughs> to wreck your plastic. You know, it's just going to melt and eat it. I'm saying that because I made that mistake, not thinking. <laughs> um, so yeah. So we're giving it a brush, you know, like, like most things, you know, it's better to give it more coats, more light coats than lots of heavy, heavy coats. Um, most of this is dried off already, um, but you know, I like to leave it a little bit longer before I put the second coat on. Okay, so done. <coughs> Come back to this. the uh, big flat surfaces without worrying about disrupting those little bits in between that uh, we've done previously. It's a bit like when you're sanding, just do a little bit at a time, so you make sure you cover all the, the bits, get all the bits covered. So you need is a little bit that's not being coated, and you're in for some fun because <laughs> that foam sticks like shit to a shovel. Yeah, I'll, I'll put you on a time lapse in a second. Um, I'll just make sure I've covered all the points I need to cover. Um, I did find some more, some different um, background music for the time lapse because uh, that little piece of music was actually written by my eldest son and played. Um, I think it's called Banjo. I called it Banjo. And I've been desperate to get him to, 
to do, write us some more bits, you, you know. Um, he's at university at the moment, so yeah, I was actually sick to death of it. I hope you guys, <laughs> you guys probably feel the same. <laughs> so um, uh, I find a site where I can design, um, download some royalty-free um, bits just to play while the time lapse is on. But he's coming home this weekend, so it's the first weekend home. We haven't seen him for, God, forever, it feels like. It's our first child to go to uni, so it's a bit of a... I know I used to joke about it, I couldn't get, wait to get rid of him, but um, yeah. I'm sure all the parents out there will... You know, they're a pain when they care, but when they go, you don't half miss them. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's going to be lovely this weekend. Yeah, he survived uh, Freshers' Week. Well, we've survived not trying to bail him out to, you know, with food parcels and whatnot. So he's got to stand on his own two feet now. But no, very proud of him. Anyway, enough soppy stuff from me. Okay, so that's done. I'm going to pop you on time lapse. Um, and basically, I'm just going to, like I say, I'm going to just go around and, and probably give these parts uh, a good four coats um, laying them dry quite thoroughly in between um, and I'll probably give the wings four coats just for the hell of it on this four, on the first um, pull and then on subsequent pulls I only need to give the, the tops probably uh, one coat and hopefully the um, cores one coat as well. Okay then let's get you onto time lapse.